Removal of Synthetic Sling from Urethra In this video, we will demonstrate removal of a synthetic mid-urethral sling that has perforated the urethra and the concomitant urethral reconstruction. Urethral complications due to synthetic mid-urethral sling are uncommon. They can occur after placement of all types of synthetic slings. Possible causes of urethral complications after sling placement may include unrecognized intraoperative entry into the urethral lumen or excessive tension placed on the sling. When this is not recognized and addressed, over time the mesh may erode into the urethra. There is no consensus as to the surgical management of urethral complications in regards to routes to remove the mesh, endoscopically versus transvaginally, whether an interposition flap should be utilized and whether a concomitant anti-incontinence procedure, such as a pubovaginal sling, should be placed at the time of surgery. An individualized approach is used based on patient presentation and surgeon expertise. A 66-year-old woman was referred with a history of anterior and posterior colporophy and a retropubic synthetic mid-urethral sling 12 years prior. The patient reports difficulty voiding since the time of surgery. She has to stand and bend over to urinate. Physical exam revealed tenderness to palpation of the anterior vaginal wall and no mesh extrusion. In the past, she had three prolapse repairs, the last one in 2005 with a concomitant vaginal hysterectomy. During an outpatient cystourethroscopy, the bladder was normal, but there was a urethral perforation at 7 o'clock, just distal to the bladder neck. A careful evaluation of the urethra is critical in the assessment of these patients. In some cases, the perforation can be subtle. When there is a perforation, one can expect the sling will be found very deep in the dissection. An inverted U incision is marked out on the anterior vaginal wall. This vaginal incision is used to prevent overlapping suture lines at the end of the case, reducing the risk of a urethrovaginal fistula. A solution of lidocaine with epinephrine is injected for hydrodissection. The incision is made and an anterior vaginal wall flap is developed with sharp and blunt dissection. Care is taken to maintain adequate thickness and create a wide-based flap in order to preserve the vascular supply. The bladder neck area and contiguous mesh is palpated to ensure the proper area of dissection, shown by the tip of the Metzenbaum scissors. Lateral dissection of the flap towards the sulcus is performed to reduce the tension of the tissue in the midline. The mesh is palpated again to ensure the appropriate location of the dissection. Though palpable, there is still much tissue between the dissection so far and the sling. After the mesh is palpated, dissection continues deeper into the periurethral and urethral tissues. As mentioned earlier, proper identification of the mesh location is extremely important in these cases. Feeling a step off with a urethral dilator is useful to identify the location of mesh. The area where the dissection needs to be continued is shown with the tip of the Metzenbaum scissors. As opposed to an extruded sling or the typical obstructing sling that is not difficult to find and not too deep. By definition, once a portion of a sling is present in the urethra, it is very deep and can be much more difficult to locate. In many cases, the lateral arms can be difficult to identify as well. At this point, the bladder just proximal to the bladder neck and the mesh is entered, and by tracing distally, the mesh is easily identified. In a case without urethral perforation, one would take great care to stay out of the urinary tract, but in these cases, one must enter it sooner or later, and when the mesh is very proximal and almost hypersuspended, this step facilitates the identification of the mesh. With sharp and blunt dissection, the mesh was isolated and a right angle clamp is passed behind the mesh. Because the mesh is perforating the urethra, 
after it is identified, a portion of the urethral wall is still overlying it. For that reason, more dissection is needed to skeletonize the sling. For this step, it is useful to use the scalpel blade in combination with blunt dissection. This allows a more precise use of the Metzenbaum scissors to complete the skeletonization of the sling. The mesh is completely isolated and identified in the midline. The mesh is subsequently transected in the midline. After the right side of the mesh is dissected laterally and removed, the dissection is performed on the left side. The mesh is dissected further laterally outside, ventral to the urethra, and then transected as proximally as possible. In this case, a total of 3 centimeters of mesh was removed. The bladder neck and urethra are closed with the polyglactin 4O running suture as the first layer. Urethral integrity is confirmed with water infusion with a Foley catheter placed in the distal urethra, which demonstrates a small defect which is closed with a single stitch of a 4O polyglactin suture, after which the urethra is watertight. This technique is a simple and effective way to evaluate the urethral integrity during the reconstruction. Two more overlaying tissue layers are closed with polyglactin 3O running suture. Finally, the inverted U-flap is closed with two running polyglactin 2O sutures. Two month post-op, there is no pain or bleeding. The force of stream was much improved, but she reports some urgency with moderate SUI. The anterior vaginal wall was healing well without evidence of fistula. The PVR was zero. Anticholinergics were prescribed and will be reassessed in two months after the healing process is complete to better define if any further procedure is needed. In conclusion, a urethral perforation after sling placement should be suspected in patients with bladder outlet obstructive symptoms and or recurrent UTIs. Careful cystourethroscopy should be performed. Had the perforation in this case been missed, it would have been very difficult to locate the sling at the time of surgery, given its depth in the tissue. Furthermore, entry into the urethra would have been thought to be iatrogenic. The transvaginal approach to removal of mesh within the urethra allows for complete removal of any mesh in proximity to the urethra and straightforward reconstruction with excellent results.